about anything. Nothing's off the table, man. All right, introduce yourself. Man, y'all already know what it is. Yours truly, white boy, I'm out here, 214 shit. All right, man. So tell me a little bit about yourself and where you're from, where you grew up, and when you came to try, because I understand that. You got the New York vibe to you too, but you you from the town too, so break it down. Um, all right, so y'all already know you know I'm from East New York, I'm from Brooklyn, but I rep 214 2 D fullest, man. 214, if you don't know what that is, pull up, man. Prospect. We outside. You always gonna see us. Alright. When'd you come to um when did you leave Brooklyn? Um I got the Trenton in 2005. Um, I was here probably for like two years. Then shit got a little sticky for me. Uh, I was 14 then. Got the Trenton in 05. I went to jail in 07. So, you know, my time was short lived, but then, you know, I came home and I'm back out here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, so you was outside during uh, 06, 07, which is one of the craziest time periods. He was a 14 year old kid during the 2006. Yeah, that shit was, I ain't gonna lie, that shit was a little ugly. If you was in it for real, then you knew what was going I was on. In like, <laughs> I was like, nine. Nah. Man, <laughs> Can't I, look, real shit, if you, if you wasn't in it, you ain't wanna be in it. Right. I'm telling you, being in it got me 10 years in prison, so, you know. So you did 10 years at 14? At 16. 16. You came 10 home years 26. At 16, came home 26. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that shit was what a little you, ugly. What you um, get from that experience of them ten years? Like, what did you um, realize? Uh, if you ain't grinding for something, you grinding for nothing. I mean, if you ain't really like, you gotta really be on some shit sometime. I mean, everybody, everybody don't take no for an answer. I mean, some people only understand violence, mm. but. I mean, sometimes you got to try to move past that. I mean, right. be a bigger person or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I didn't know you was as old as you are. Um, I thought you was like my age or my my, my cousins in the age. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, thanks to my pops, man. He got some good genes, man. You Shit cool. Young, you look young. I couldn't tell you was 14 in 06. <laughs> you feel me? You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, so... Let me ask you a question out off the record as far as like music, but just a question I like to ask. When you do 10 years and you come back, do you feel like um, you stuck in 06? Or do you feel like you was able to keep up with what was changing in the world? Um, No, nah, I'm saying that shit was definitely rough. You got to think like when I went to jail, it was like boost mobile phones. Motherfuckers was still you chirping, came back you feel to, me? Uh, smartphone. Yeah. Like you got a whole screen on your shit. Like that shit was different. I mean. Yeah. But then, you know, like you said, I keep a couple motherfuckers your age around that. And yeah. I mean, keep me up on shit. Uh oh. No wonder you don't respond back on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what nah, the fuck? Nah. Nigga, is I'm, you coming I'm, or what? <laughs> nah, I'm trying to be on that shit, bro, but like sometimes you know you gotta yeah, mute them. You, you gotta, gotta mute them sometimes. Makes sense now though, it definitely makes sense. But yeah. listen. Let's get into the music. As far as was you rapping in jail? Like when did you get the bars? Alright, so before I went in there, I thought about rapping. I mean, but you know, a lot of kids think about shit. Yeah. But when I came home, uh my people, she was doing tattoos and shit at the studio, Fly It Den back then. And I remember Fly It Den there. Yeah, Fly It Den was all right, you know what I mean? So they had the studio in there and I was going in there every day, collar. Mm-hmm. Black collar. So ah, my boy Black Collar. You know what I mean? If you know, you know, collar. Yeah, yeah, facts. So he kind of like got me started with this shit. And it was like, I'm off to the races. You know what I mean? It just, you know, I had little bumps in the road that kind of like pushed back where I probably would have been. You know what I mean? If I ain't had those breaks. But, right. you know what I mean? It is what it is. I'm still pushing. All right. All right. So you had the best performance at our open mic. And, Another thing I want to say is um, you could tell you have a, a base of music where you come from where it's like, it's not mumble. You get what I'm saying? Like a lot yeah. of people mumble or they just uh, shower over different violence or whatever. They, 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 they rely more on different things 
Right. But you you grew up listening to rappers that really rap. Probably got like some Jada styles. I, I, yeah, I'm assuming, yeah. but you rap. Like, where did yeah, you get Troy that bring it come from? Um, well, you know, first off, I want to say, you know, salute much better. You know, salute Trent Talks for the win. I mean, I appreciate y'all for this, man. Seriously, no problem, no problem. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, as far as the music I listen to, like you said, you know, those is always going to be like relevant, like factors in the music that I make, you know, kissing them. But like, I'm starting to understand like as new artists that's like coming up now that's making it cool to rap again. You get what I'm saying? Like you got certain artists like Leaf is a good rapper. I mean, Millie's is a good rapper. Like these are dudes that actually use their words. You get what I'm saying? So, um, I want to be able to rap with the best of them because that mumbling shit, that shit only going, I mean, I be feeling like low key for me. I be feeling like a lot of them be getting a short run and then it's like, Mm -hmm. you don't make nothing sustainable if you don't make something motherfuckers can remember. You know, shaking your ass only going to get you but so far. Right. Yeah. Even just, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I just like good rappers, man. I like rappers that use, I mean, that put some thought into it. Mm-hmm. Well, you you can tell, you can tell, even from you going through a little bit of your discography, you got stories, you know, you got, you telling stories on there, you talking about experiences, you talking about, you, you, you rhyme all throughout, you all throughout, you making an effort to make sure you rhyme or even rhyme every other line, you get what I'm saying, like a real rapper yeah. does, and that's, an effort that a lot of people don't make, and I respect that person. I personally want to tell you that I respect that. No, nah, there's an audience out there that I, still respect that. No, nah, I appreciate saying? that, Luke. Seriously, man, I appreciate that, bro. Because sometimes I know it's easy to like feel like you got to get some auto tune, you got to do this, and ain't nothing wrong with that either. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a '95 baby, so I just grew up listening to rappers more so. I mean, Soldier Boy was the first mumble rapper I heard, and I ain't like Soldier. Until mm. everybody else liked him, and I was yeah. like, oh, I gotta do the soldier boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, like, it, it, it definitely become a thing where the more you hear something, it's like, all right, you ain't got no kinda... choice. Like, I personally ain't even like the Migos. I hated the Migos. Like, I'm really an old soul. Like, I hated the Migos, and I refused it. Like, you won't find one Migos song on my mm. playlist. You know what I'm no, saying? I'll, so it's I'll... like, this was, I get and that. I was in college when they came out, like 2014. You was probably still jammed up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, I um, definitely was. I had like three years left. I've seen the change. I've seen the change, and I've seen the Migos now become old heads in this shit. So I've seen niggas that was never supposed to last to become old heads. So the game has turned into a different chain, whereas now date, like imagine a mumble rapper becoming the old head. This is where we're at in 2024, where this is the scenery of the world, the music in general. You know? <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. I'm good. <laughs> I'm gonna cut that out. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> all right, so look, this is what I really think as far as like, I think certain rappers, they always gonna make it because you know they make music for the youth. You know what I mean? Right, right. They, they get their music towards the kids more so than anybody else versus you know, you got to understand that kids got like a small attention span anyway. So when you're doing this and you're gearing the music towards them, they got to push so much because kids is always on to the next thing. You get what I'm saying? Right, right. Nobody don't really sit and take no time to really like, I right, let me really see what he talking about. Mm-hmm. Know what I mean? Because more times than not, the messages is clear. Know what I mean? A lot of people want to hear that bang bang versus, you know what I mean? And I took that shit too. I I, I took that shit too. I just give it up in the sense of these are the things that I've seen yeah. versus I'm out here trying to blaze some my shit. There's nothing wrong with talking about experiences. Just like if a motherfucker went to the army, came back from the army, and was happened to talk about it, it's just his experiences. You get what I'm saying? But I mean more so in the sense where... Um, that is the whole consensus of your rap. It's just that. Like, you're mm-hmm. not even rhyming. It's some people that we just afraid of and they go rappers because people are afraid of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I also want to talk about your performance. I had the line. Um, you said, I want you to say it again. You said, Blunts 
on the block in the block hell bound. Like that shit was fire. Like not just that line, but the entire song. Like was what was the inspiration behind that? All right, so that's my song, Welcome Down. I mean, it's coming to all platforms soon. You don't um, got it up yet? It's on my YouTube, but I'm bringing it to Apple Music and Spotify. I mean, it's coming up next week. Um, that is a banger. Nah, you got to get behind that, push that. I definitely appreciate one. it, man. That's um, the one. One of the ones. I ain't going to say it's the only one, but it's the one of the ones. Yeah, my man Tripp, he, uh, he booked right now. You know, for my boy, boys on the job. I mean, we out here. Um, that's he on that song with me. And, you know, for those of you who are Call of Duty fans like me, um, because I definitely get busy, I spark your ass. Um, it just, it was one of those things I had gained inspiration from that. It was like, um, blunts in the blick, hell bound, don't make a sound, got the strap on us and it's going down. War zone most wanted, yeah, he got the crown. All black on, mask on, hoodie tight, time to walk him down. Know what I mean? So anybody who played Call of Duty who knows what's going on, know what I mean? Warzone, you got that most wanted contract, that that crown on your head, man. And we coming to get your ass. You get what I'm saying? So I fuck with it. And I appreciate that you fuck with it. No, word. Um, your energy with the song was really good as well. You know what I mean? You... Got the crowd involved. It's rare to get the crowd involved at an open mic, but um, overall, like the everything was like a hit from the ad libs to the, like the um, the flow. Um, no, I definitely appreciate that, man. So um, overall, it's it just a banger. I would recommend even doing a music video for it. It's like that. It's one of them all. Bob's, you heard what he said again. You heard what he said, Bob's. I need a, I, I need a video. All right. You heard what he said, Bob. Um, right now, I ain't even gonna lie. I'm pushing that, and what I got up right now, treacherous. I'm coming for everybody. If you're looking for somebody who took a son, who's saying son, I know that you've seen, or you know you've seen. Mm-hmm. Log in. I'm telling you. Tune in. Tune in. Trenton Talks, he gonna bring it to y'all. Mm-hmm. Tune in. So what's up? We getting another performance next Yo, Friday? Honestly, if y'all ain't there, I'll definitely, if they ain't there, I'll definitely be there. Right. I'll be there. We gonna make this shit shake. I mean, me and Trey Baby BG, we gonna pull up. We gonna rock that shit, man. It's on. All right. Can you uh, walk the verse down for us real quick before we get up out of here? Just a little bit. I'm saying I give it to y'all. Um, what I'm pushing right now, and yo, look, before I do this, because I definitely want y'all to pop out for me on Friday, because I'm performing <laughs> off, I'm not only performing next Friday, and I'm performing this Friday. Right. So, I might have this out in time for them to know that. Yo, come outside, bro. You come outside. We you know man I mean? spot, right? We man spot. We coming outside. We getting this shit shaking, and I'm, I'm coming more so along the lines of like, uh, Are you doing Hellbound, though? Oh, most certainly. All right. Most certainly, because right, we got to get it. I'm going to come out there. Nah, we got to, <laughs> listen, we got to get it shaking. The bitches said they coming outside. So if they coming outside, you got to come outside, Lou. Lou, if they coming right. outside, you a shiny motherfucker. They like all that jewelry and sexy no shit. They like that what you be on, man. Right, um, so. But as far as like verses, so... He never seen it coming when he's, let me see. He never seen it coming when they seen that he just fled. He laying on the ground, bleeding, gasping for air, thinking how it wasn't fair. He thought his calm was rare, laying with a blank stare because he thought he was prepared. Pulled the blick quick, heard a stiff click before he took his last shit, closed his eyes, this is it. White sheets, ambulance, blue and reds flashing. Whole world crashing after scrapping for them rations. So weed and coke, but rapping was his passion. I was in the stool, came from on the block trapping. Got a wifey and a bitch strictly down for fellatio. Got another bomb and searching new ways to make it go. Chill, son. If y'all want the rest, y'all got to come outside and come see us, man. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. it. Right. Tell y'all, them your socials, man. Y'all know what's up. Yours truly, white boy. I'm outside. 
Y'all want to catch me on the gram? White Boy 214. That's W H Y T E B O Y 214. Now, I mean, if y'all ever want to catch me, holla at me, man. Mama Lou know how to get to me, man. All right. Real nigga. Here.